All right. Good morning. Good morning, our people. We are running. I I was running a little late. Let me not put this on his DP. His DP has been ready for the past ten minutes. <laughs> it's me that got here late. So good morning. Welcome to the program. We are so so happy to see you guys here. Oh, we know that the atmosphere is changing. The universe is changing. Things are happening in the background. Things that you can see and things that you cannot see. The question is, are you ready? Are you ready for what is about to come? Are you ready to do the needful? God has given us our gift. God has blessed us. God has loved us. God has done it all for us. If only we can be honest with ourselves and stop deceiving ourselves. So I am hopeful that my people will eventually wake up and grab the bull by the horns so that we can get to our destination. We need to start building a nation for our children, we need to we need some dignity for our people. We are tired of picking crumbs and trash, and waiting for you know Christmas to come in so that someone in one over will come in and feed us. That that is not fit for a human being. We need to do more. So welcome to the program today. My name is Mona Chin Saga. As usual, help us to share, like, subscribe, hit the notification button. We are on. YouTube, we are on Facebook, we are in Clubhouse, Twitter, Twitter Space, and Rumble. Uh, we are trying to be all over the place. You know, help us to share this information. By the way, I don't want to not give you guys credit. You know, last week we had a lot of shares, so you are doing the needful. That's what we want. Share the information, summarize it for those that will not have time to watch it. You know, tell other people about the Doctors of Truth. One of our viewers says is the Doctors of Truth University. <laughs> Coming here, we want to do the right thing. You know, for the first time, we are going to set up a map with consistency and dedication. We'll get to a destination, no happy and way. That is how other people get it done. So we have an hour to get this program done today. Let me allow my sister to introduce herself. Thank you so much, Dr. Munachi. Thank you, our viewers. We appreciate you. Everyone here, the new, those that are finding us for the first time, you're welcome. And the, those that are returning, you're also welcome. We appreciate you. We know that we're in this together. As you share, like, and then go to YouTube, um, Facebook, follow us, and they will ask you to click the button to uh, be notified when we go live. Please also select that option um, so that you get the work um, done. And uh, my name is Dr. A.P. Simon Okube. I live in Lexington, Kentucky. And uh, from time to time, we come home. I was in Nigeria recently, and I've, recently I've been there twice. So for those of you that think that we are in the U.S., we don't know what is going on, <laughs> we know what is going on. We have food soldiers on the ground, but our own type of food soldiers are different. Now, they're, the ones that, they're not the ones that go to kill our people. They're the ones that work with us go to meetings when there's a meeting because this social media is not this sensitization it's not uh, where the action is taking place the social media is where we inform our people on what we are doing on the ground so we go for meetings we go for consultations negotiations and everything in interior places far far places so when we say alliance the alliance we are talking about it's not a youtube or facebook coalition and people come on zoom and have meetings no that's not the alliance we are talking about so please help us share and like as work continues because like my sister said we are going to get this work done it is the right thing to do the universe is waiting for us the whole world they've been waiting for africa and we are going to fix africa starting from nigeria the foundation of nigeria must be fixed and you and i will do that job we're not going to leave our destiny in the hands of some random politicians that are just there to make money and then steal all the resources and share with their friends and then sign us away we're not going to do that so please sit back and let's take off with this, this uh, show thank you very much Thank you. Thank you so much. She said, it looks like they are blocking us. I can't find us on Facebook. Have you seen the link? Is anyone seeing the link? Viewers, if you, Let's see. Let's if you see. can hear or say something, I can't find the link online. Okay, let's see. Here. I only see the um, promo they sent two of hours ago. They haven't sent this one. Okay. I've seen us. I've seen us. Let me forward it to us. 
Yeah, send it to me so I can forward it out. Uh, please help us to share. You can see they are at it again. But you know what? God is doing what he needs to do, right? Mm -hmm. It's metaling our website, our uh, page. They are also metaling their money and 13,000 people are losing their jobs. Yep. Because they, they are messing with God's plan. That's mm -hmm. not how it's supposed to be. We are here to educate our people and someone is intentionally blocking it to make sure our people don't get educated. We know how that goes. So there's someone that owns the universe and it's not that fake one that people call and sabotage. The one that will create the situation where things will fall apart, even as powerful as you are, you won't be able to do anything about it. That's the kind of God we serve. The almighty God. <laughs> almighty God. So help us to continue to share. Oh, my God. What about, did, were you able to see it on YouTube? I can't see anything to this for, to save my life. Yes, I'm trying I to get it. It's on YouTube. I'm trying to get it. Okay, so maybe it's my device. Yeah, send it to me so I can forward it mm. out. Okay. Good morning, Daniel. Daniel say that he sees the video. I guess it's from my side because you know the page. I'm managing the page, so they know when they block me, they will block a whole lot of things. I'm not able to see anything. I'll I'll go with the one that you shared with us. Anyway, welcome to the program. Help us to share, 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 like, like, like. We appreciate you being here. We are looking for stakeholders. We are not looking for followers. We don't want any follow. We want you to learn how to lead. So we can get this job done and be done quickly. Oh, somebody has just sent it to me. Thank you, Justin. All right. So our topic today is the convergence of global terror network in Nigeria. We are watching these things happening all around us. They are giving us, you know, they are giving us news here and there. We are seeing bits and pieces. Some of us are seeing weird-looking creatures in our land that we are not used to seeing. You know, driving Sienna bringing it to our stores like we see these things we know something is going on and uh, like we mentioned last week the american embassy and the uk um, uh, embassy as well they alerted the people as of the terror that is to come but i think my people are still getting ready for christmas <laughs> as usual so according to matthew 2 18 a voice is heard in rama weeping and great mourning as rachel with for her children and refuse to be comforted because her children are no more. This is one thing that we try to avoid because we know how hard it is for mothers when they lose their children. We've been asking the adults, the ones that do give birth, to wake up and begin to be part of the change, the meaningful change that we are seeking that can bring peace and prosperity to the land so our children can prosper. I don't know why that is too much to ask for. The above incident occurred when a terrorist, King Herod, felt mocked and frustrated and uh, furious because some wise men asthmated him. So he sent his soldiers to kill innocent boys. It is only dogs that are known to be loyal to their owners, not lions and tigers. The monster created by some illiterate Nigerian Northern leaders in the name of politics now have a life of their own and they have become uncontrollable. Hence, the terror that we are seeing spreading all over. They have planted them in our forests. They are in our backyard. They are already in the market selling human beings as suya. They are all over. All they are willing is for signal and things will begin to overwhelm you. As these internal colonizers mm. keep rolling out and trying different parts of their conquest and feudalistic agenda, they will soon get frustrated and probably go wild and begin mm. to kill people everywhere. It's coming, people. Make sure you know how to protect yourself. So the question to each block in the Ninas Alliance territory is, what would you do if the terror shows up in your neighborhood? We saw a video of our brother saying, the same thing we'll be telling you guys for months, Afghanistan loading. These people are willing to take us backward in the name of their so-called religion. They are willing to destroy their own brothers and sisters in the name of whatever they think they are building. How can we build a nation that with people that want to destroy things? How can we build a nation with people that we have no common values with? 
one thing is for sure. Our identity as indigenous peoples is whom God said we are. We cannot keep denying it, uh, uh, denying our true identity because some colonizers will not be happy with it. So today, as usual, we're going to continue discussion on reclaiming our hijacked sovereignty, our true identity, our land, our resources as indigenous ethnic nations to chart a new future for ourselves, information of our, of our choices away from the bondage and imposition of a succession of some suzerainties. It is our right and we do not, we do not need anyone's approval to exercise this to the fullest. The question then, do you know that it's your right? Do you know that you can put a stop to this mayhem? Do you know that you can say enough is enough? How can we be so educated and so well learned? And people drew out a map for us for the past 60 years and they are steadily going through that their plan over and over. And we are watching them, we are busy speaking English and praying, selling, buying and selling. They have invited all their sisters. They have used even our resources. They will kidnap us and they will give them millions so that they can raise more funds for ammunition. They have taken over the ammunition of Nigeria Fell state called Nigeria. Every day they will say, oh, they shoot these people and they run away, they will take all the, the, the weapons. And you guys are hearing it and the good men and women are there, obedient, willing to be killed. <sighs> I'll allow my sister to add, let me pull up the video of the day. This is just overwhelming. Thank you so much, my sister. Um, we'll continue to do this um, enlightenment um, a time will come when uh, Ninas and all the affiliated uh, platforms will be the only place you will hear truth. Because those that want to finish you, those that want to exterminate you, are also using lies, deception, and manipulation. And um, we are here to straighten things out for you. But we know some of you want to listen to lies. You know, you want to, you, you, like, you, it makes you comfortable when you're told lies, you know, so that at the end you'll be a victim and then you start shouting, oh, they're victimizing me, they're marginalizing me, they are doing this. When you have the power to bring that change, not just for yourself, but to your, for your generation coming, when you choose to be online, just gossiping around, showing what you don't know, your party or all that. At the end of the day, the next generation is going to ask you, what did you do when you heard Afghanistan loading? When you heard terror is about to take over the land, what did you do to stop it? You will answer that question, not me. Because I, as far as we are concerned, we are doing all that we need to do. And God is helping us every minute of the day. We know that God is with us in this project. We know we're on the right pathway. And then we are, that's why we get encouraged. You see us all the time, we are like always fired up to do this work because there's encouragement coming, there's divine encouragement. So for those of you that choose to do politics, to play politics with the lives of our people, a time will come when you will answer. You will answer. So this is the first video we're showing you today. This is terror attack. It's not coming from us. It's coming from people that have even satellites monitoring things all over the world. Because since that 9-11 happened to America, they don't joke with terror anymore because they know that anywhere terror assembles or somebody breeds terror, that the next thing they can export it from there to attack America. So they are not playing anymore. So from that time, they changed their policy to take their war to the land where they are producing the terror. So they are there monitoring things first hand when they tell you terror is coming they're not playing with words they're not just trying to psych you up they are talking out of evidence out of information out of yeah. things that they can prove america is not a small nation that will joke around and play around with information like this so please watch this video and then as we will bring also nina's report at the end of it please go ahead my sister Command in Africa is warning that Al Qaeda, ISIS, and other Islamic terror groups are now trying to take over parts of the continent's most populous nation. 
Major General Dagvin Anderson says Muslim terrorists have set their sights on Nigeria's southern and northwestern regions, and the U.S. is now sharing specific intelligence with the country. So this intelligence sharing is absolutely vital, and we stay fully engaged with the government of Nigeria to uh, provide them an understanding of what these terrorists are doing. They are the terrorists. <laughs> their goal? eventually turn Nigeria into a Muslim country and force Christians who make up half the country's population to either leave or convert. Christians are in the eye of the, the target and, and they're coming after them. And the numbers are staggering. August 6th, Muslims stormed four remote Christian villages in Kaduna State, killing 22 villagers. July 24th, 21 dead, scores injured, and several Christian homes destroyed by militants. July 19th, 19 people killed when assailants armed with guns and machetes attacked a wedding reception. And the list goes on. Leading human rights groups say what's going on in Nigeria is a genocide. If you look at what's happened uh, on the last 20 years, George, it's just massive massive number of attacks against Christians. Uh, look, 50 to 70,000 have been murdered. For years, the main terror group was Boko Haram, which seeks to overthrow the government here and create an Islamic state. They go after Christians and moderate Muslims. They push a hardline Muslim agenda. It is their intention to establish a caliphate and to uh, just rid all of Nigeria and West Africa of any Western influence whatsoever. Now, there's a new actor on the scene in Nigeria's so-called Middle Belt region, where the Muslim North meets the Christian South, a terror group made up of Muslim Fulani herders are killing thousands of Christians. More than 1,400 Christians were hacked to death in just the first seven months of 2020 by Fulani herders. Unfortunately, the secular media are uh, quite often biased and trying to present this as a tribal conflict rather than religious. Nigeria's president, a Muslim, has so far done very little to stop the bloodshed. His police and army are also mostly made up of Muslims. <laughs> the attackers are never captured. They are not prosecuted. The security services respond very slowly. A, a full day can go on with attacks happening and no security shows up. And frequently, the government officials will provide cover. Helpless and vulnerable to almost daily attacks, leading Catholic bishops are now urging Nigerian Christians to defend themselves. Human rights groups are asking the White House to appoint a special envoy to help end the persecution of Christians in Nigeria. Unless the world takes note and puts pressure, economic pressures. The the top general of U.S. Special Operations Command in Africa is warning that Al-Qaeda, ISIS and other Islamic terror groups are now... Oh, I'm sorry. Meanwhile, King's Group is helping more than 3,000 Christians who lost their businesses, homes, farms or land to Boko Haram and Fulani militant attacks. International Christian Concern has created communal farms to give victims the opportunity to rebuild their lives. When they get back to work, the family is fed, they have a future, the kids can go back to school. It's a restoration of hope, it really is. Um, and it's much more than just economics, it's, it's the whole community, it's all the parts of life. All right, we're going to stop sharing and play the next video. As my sister pulls up the next video, you can see the words are specific. These people have a target. These people have an aim. They have a strategy. How is your PVC going to stop this? Is a question we're asking. For those that care to reason, for those that care to think, that for those that care to critically examine what we're putting on the table, these people are determined to establish caliphates in Nigeria. It's not what we call Fabu. Some people will say, oh, oh, Fabu. No, this is real. What is your plan? It's only a tree that hears, I'm going to kill you, and stands and do nothing. What is your plan against this terror alert, terror report? 
What is your plan to save your people? What is your strategy? Let's listen to what Nina has to say to us. Go ahead, please, my sister. Transition. Let us take some time out and uh, go into transition so that the matter doesn't resolve itself on the street. Of course, they ignored it and went on to the next election. We kept uh, reaching out to mobilize those who are suffering from uh, all aspects of uh, that constitution. The ones whose oil and gas assets are seized in the Niger Delta, the ones who have been slaughtered in the Middle Belt, the ones who have been molested in Yoruba land everywhere. And uh, we took the matter even further to in the international uh, arena where the owners of uh, oil and gas assets in the Niger Delta were now you know, having to contend with uh, people who are blowing up uh, pipelines, just trying to bring some kind of uh, framework that will uh, you know, shut out uh, violence. And so having gone from creating that consensus through the original consensus you know, against unitarism to the consensus against that constitution, to the consensus uh, for the time frame within which uh, this matter had to be resolved, uh, you know. And it came to 2018, after the solemn assemblies uh, from the regional blocks, 2015 was the one of Port Harcourt, 2017 was the one in Ibadan, 2018 was the one in Makodi, where the regional blocks, the three blocks in the alliance, had uh, repudiated that constitution to the seeing of the world. And we went out there in 2019 to tell the international stakeholders between Washington, and uh, New York to say, look, this is what's happening in our space in case it becomes uh, you know, uh, a little more manageable so that everybody could understand it. We've done all of that. And uh, the constitutional force measure was the culmination because there are some people who are thinking that Nina's came together only <laughs> three days ago. The constitutional force measure of 16th December 2020 was the culmination of this 20-year uh, process that became 22 because of Corona, we lost one year. And uh, so, so just we, we, we went back to this, uh, you know, bit of detail to let our people know that uh, in saying that uh, we cannot endure this uh, master servant union, this union of death any further, as imposed by this constitution, he uh, was in. He was to say this is the this is when it must end if we are to discuss it under a roof. And we're saying that we're doing everything we can to make it uh, end uh, that peacefully so that uh, the, the, the replacement could come from negotiations and discussions, not on in commotion and rowdiness on the street. But it appears there are the political actors who are thinking that, uh, well, let's just uh, fight on and uh, defeat them, go to election and then uh, be happy uh, <coughs> ever after. It's not going to be so. And uh, we're just telling our people that... Uh, even if they stubbornly proceed to election, the winner of that election will discover that there's no Nigeria to govern the day after. That is what, uh, let Atiku hear it, let Obi hear it, let whoever is going to win that election in 2023 hear it, that the 1999 constitution has been rejected by the owners of the land, and that uh, anybody who's hoping to hang on to that fraud as basis of a uh, governmental power and authority, as uh, dictated in section 14.2a of that constitution, is going to find out that there's no Nigeria to govern. We have. All right. Go ahead, Sister. Thank you so much. Um, thank you, our viewers. Those are sharing. Please continue to share, continue to like on YouTube. Please do the same thing. Hit the notification button. Don't stay after. Just do it now, please, so that um, our people can get informed on what is going on. So, Usually, we'll try to break these things down for you. Ninas, they bring out their um, press releases, the videos, and all that. But what we do on this platform is to break it down. Sometimes some people complain, oh, they're using big English. Yes, the, the world we are speaking to, this, they, they understand big English also because <laughs> that English belongs to them. However, we are here as mothers to pieces it for you so that if the big English is not letting you understand, We'll break it down for you for anybody to understand. So my sister has pulled up the PowerPoint that we're going to use today for this presentation. We try to find out how did we how did this problem start? My people will say, Ben Millis Weber no Pubogo. Where did this start? Because if you don't understand where a problem started, you will not understand the solution. If you don't understand, like oh, that's why doctors make diagnosis. If somebody has cancer and you're giving blood uh, 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 blood uh, tonic or you're giving malaria treatment, 
you're not treating the patient and the patient is going to die. So our people, let's listen now. So Organization of Islamic Corporation, OIC, what does this have to do with what we're talking about? Because you remember when they played the video, it talked about making Nigeria the caliphate, making Nigeria the head of whatever they're doing. Why Nigeria? Because Nigeria is full of resources. Every kilometer in that territory called Nigeria is full of resources. So anybody that has a, a global project, we want to capture Nigeria first and then use the resources in Nigeria to execute it. It's just common sense. So now in 1969, when that war, that genocide, Biafra genocide was going on, um, go on, General Yakubu go on, that we call willing tools because we recognize that in this globe, uh, uh, Islamic global agenda, that there have been, they will always use some Christians that we call willing tools, the, the Judas goats. They always find some Christians to use, so-called Christians, because Christianity is something that you can answer your name, John, but you are the worst human being on earth. So there's some, that's why I say Christians in quotes. They always use them. So Yakubu Gawan, 1969, when they put him on top of that to execute that Biafra genocide, they, he was desperate to win the war. So he started looking for support, started looking for help. He ran to Egypt. Yes. <laughs> Sometimes when you look at what happened to Nigeria, it's as if you're reading Bible. Yakubu Gawad went to Egypt to seek support. The military head of state then, General Abdul Nasser, then he was a Pan-Africanist, Afghanist, uh, uh, doing those Pan-Africanism. He supplied him with some sophisticated military wares. Our people give the accounts that even in markets, they could see these people flying and bombing them to the extent that they would see the pilots. So they were bombing civilians. They were killing civilians, not their military people. Apart from that, there was a newly formed group then, Organization of Islamic Corporation, 1969. He also introduced Gawan to this group so that the rest members can support him to win this war. Recently, we saw Peter Obi go to Egypt. He said he's looking for electric. electric <laughs> he's looking for electricity. <laughs> he's looking for electricity or he's looking for electrician. <laughs> I don't know what he's looking for there. It's just for us to be connecting these dots as it happens to you. When these people are under pressure, when they are desperate to get what they want, they go even to the devil to covenant with the devil. But who do they serve? You, the people. You will be sold for them to get what they want. So 1969, that's what Yakubu Gawan did. And at that time, they were observer member. He said, okay, let's be observer member. That was the status. It's like you and the devil. You want to, he said, you want to eat with the devil. He said, I will use a long spoon to eat with the devil. And we're saying, why eat with the devil in the first instance? We were saying whether you're using long spoon or short spoon, why are you eating with the devil? No, but your Yakubu, go on, wanted to eat with the devil. So he said, no, we'll be on the observer, uh, uh, observer status. That's what they were for 17 years. Then by 17 years, that's 1986, the pressure came forth from the OIC on Nigeria to become full members to regularize their membership. And who was there then? Ibrahim Babangida. Okay, another thing go one did, uh, uh, let me backtrack, was that he ceded Bakasi to Cameroon because he also went there to get support. So in exchange for support, he said, carry Bakasi, go. <laughs> and Bakasi is an oil rich place. Go on, ceded it to them. So after 17 years, 1985-86, pressure came from OIC to say, Nigeria, you have been as uh, the observer status and we have helped you through this war. 
It is time for you to pay. You know, on your mommy water is what is be we see my people. So those that I don't understand Igbo, I said the gift of that moment is bring head and take head. If you go to the devil, if you go to Lucifer to say, help me, he will say, okay, I will help you. But he's going to take something in return. No free lunch in America, they will say. So 1986, who was in charge then, General Ibrahim Babangida? So he made a unilateral decision. And then at first, Morocco, he joined fully and gave them, somebody should go and find out for us and write it there, how much he gave them to join, to make Nigeria to be full member. In billions of Naira. Somebody should find it out for us, please, and put in that comments. How much Mangida gave to OIC to make Nigeria a full member of an Islamic organization. So if you are a full member, that means whatever they are doing, you're going to be part of it. Who they support, you will support. So Nigeria, that is a secular nation, has now become a full member of an Islamic organization. March 2022, uh, go forward. Who is in charge? Buhari. Buhari took $1 million. We say $1 million and gave to Afghanistan to support hmm. 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 Did he decide with you? Did he discuss with you? Did he, did, he, did he discuss with you before he made that decision? No. And then after that, Turkish president kept asking Nigeria to identify with Palestinians. Yes, Buhari did also. He declared an open support for Palestinians and for them to get Palestinian state. Why he turned around killing Biafrans, killing those that are asking for Biafra state. Double edge. So our people, what is happening to us is in, is in open. It's not hidden. They did not hide their strategy. They did not hide their plan. Everything is open. Now, terror is converging in Nigeria. That's the topic we said. The convergence of terror network in Nigeria. Please, my sister, the, the, I think the next slide. What is it for? Who are these people gathering in Nigeria? And what is their target? ISIS is coming. ISWAP is coming. Al-Qaeda is coming. Izala movement. This is an Islamic movement backed by Saudi Arabia. Boko Haram, the one that you people already used to. That one is the landlord, the one that uh, they came first. Then the Fulani herdsmen and militia. The people that the, the, the world said is the fourth, fourth world most dangerous terrorist group. Heavily armed, killing people, plucking out their eyes. You heard Autumn when he said they plucked out the eyes of his people. Of course, Mieti Allah, which is a, a Fulani social uh, cultural association. And there's some unknown terrorists and gunmen all coming from the Sharia states in that northern part of Nigeria because they have already established Sharia. They love the secular nation that we are building. Established Sharia, full Sharia in 12 states. That will be the base of their operation. And then they will move from there. All these things are happening. So now they have significant foothold and presence in our villages and towns, like my sister said when she was introducing this topic. Terror agents are already in your neighborhood. There is widespread kidnapping on our roads and streets. This is not us making it up. That's, you are seeing this is every day. There's mobile large contingent of terror machinery you saw the attack Brony governor the other day. That's what we told you. The, the, the monster that these people fed and trained ha, has, now has a life of his own. Of course, you saw the terror attack at Kaduna. Them demanding, telling, saying that Buhari knows what they want and making demand. What is that demand they're making? Hmm. So we're saying that Nigerian Fulani government is complicit in everything that is happening to you. The insecurity you're seeing, the terror you're seeing, the poverty, everything. It was in your presence that they opened up the borders for them to come in. So there's influx of terror in Nigeria. Nigeria has become where they're breeding terror. 
there is a large space of ungoverned, a large ungoverned spaces where they can breed this terror. So Nigeria government is part of the operation of terror network. They maintain these ungoverned spaces. They know. And then, U.S. is one observing all these things. Because we told you people, I want to show you also, when, Niger when U.S. placed Nigeria on their terror list, they, be they became an observer nation. That's what it means. Like, oh, Nigeria, you're no more an ordinary nation. You, you have opened up terror in your land to breed in your land. So we are watching you. Like my sister said at the time, her father was saying, I was watching you with two eyes. <laughs> so that's what happened. U.S. has been watching Nigeria, the terror that is cooking in Nigeria. So they're not going to keep quiet if anything happens. And that is why they raised an alert. They did not stop at raising alert. They began active evacuation, urgent evacuation of their people from nation's capital, from your Abuja, the seat of government, and other Western allies joined them. This speaks of Im imminent terror attack. You saw people running. My people say now, because Oko is this side, uh, it makes a lot of noise when it's moving. So if you are not deaf, you actually hear it coming and you will run for your dear life. But if you are deaf, you will not hear the terror alerts. And then the Oko is going to kill you, kill you. So Americans withdrew their people because they know that Abuja. It has the, the way Abuja is structured, they will not be able to do certain things to protect their, their, their citizens. So they moved closer to um, Lagos, which is out you know, far away from the where the terror is actually brewing, where it's coming in from, because it's coming more from the north and then spreading on other parts. They made few arrests, tried to detonate some bombs, but they didn't stop there. The fact that they made arrests and remove some bombs. They, come, they went ahead to evacuate. That evacuation is what is more important, should be more important to Nigerians. Why is it that Americans and all these Westerners are moving their important personnel out of this area? We have told you that the aim of these people coming, the terror coming, is to make Nigeria a proper Muslim country. Why? Nigeria has already been sold. So they're coming with receipts for Amazon delivery. You know, when you buy, they give you receipts, then they will deliver. So they've already, they've already sold Nigeria. We'll give you a story of how Nigeria was sold. So the people that bought Nigeria are coming to take it. To take what they bought. The way Turkey, Lebanon, all these things, they will force Christians to either leave or convert. It happened in Turkey, it happened in Lebanon, and other countries, we saw it. What is their target? Absolute feudalization is a monarchy system. You can see our politicians, they're already kneeling down and bowing to greet them. If, they, if somebody wants to be governor in Rivers, you will go to Sokoto and tie scarf and then bow down. If Obi wants to be president of Nigeria, he has to go to them, tie scarf, and bow down. Are these things hidden to you? They are not hidden to you. You might say, oh, they come to the south to wear Isiago. Okay, after wearing Isiago, what is the power in it? If there's <laughs> nothing in it now. This is just part of the deception that they will tell you, deception and manipulation. Somebody will give you, you will give somebody your empty gown that doesn't have anything. Another one will exchange and give you a spell guy, a gun that has spell on it. And you will say, hey, after all, I want my own. You want my own. We are changed. <laughs> <laughs> of what consequence is your own? Your own doesn't have any power inside it. Your own is just an ordinary okay, cloth. Their target is unitary, unitarism. That's why they removed the true federal constitution and brought unitary constitution, where you have no say. It's about ownership and control. You don't own anything. 
No land. You don't own your land. You don't own assets. You don't even own your life. It's as bad as that. Mm. The greatest danger is when someone, what you thought you own, you don't actually own it. You think you own Igbo land, it's no more your own. You think you own Yoruba land, it's no more your own. That is a very big danger. And what is their strategy? Feudalize them and then conquer them. Feudalization and then conquer. You can see they've already done it to Hausa people. They feudalized the entire Hausa land, conquered them. All those Almadris you're seeing on the road, they're Hausa children. They're not Fulani children. Mm -hmm. Fulani children are not there. They're Hausa children. Already conquered. That is what they will do to the rest of you. Igbo, Ishekirio, Tivo, Ijo. For the governors that are busy dancing slow motion dance like they are inside, walking into death, sliding into death. Una well done, no? Una well done, well, well. Una well done. People are coming to kill your people. All you can do is carry bag of uh, demons, bag of uh, uh, demon, like bag of death, and you're dancing slow dance death. I'm ashamed of our people. Hmm. Why Abuja? You see, Abuja, the three points of entering Abuja, they already conquered those three points. There's Kefi, there's Kaduna, and there's Lokoja Bridge. For those that are inside Abuja, we are asking you, these three points, if that they're already inside it, what will you do? What will be your response? Okay, you will fly. You go and enter airport. <laughs> You go through the air. You run through the air. The airport road, you see when they've had attack there. If they attack one civilian aircraft, they will close down that airport. We're not saying these things to scare you. We are bringing information to you so that you can make an informed decision. So that you understand what is ahead of us. Why are we taking chances? The Bible says, woe to those that are at ease, at ease in Zion. You think America will save you? <laughs> they, they warned you severally. Somebody is warning you and moving his own important people out of the place. What else do you want him to do for you? Meanwhile, you're lying to yourself. You are allowing them to lie to yourself, to, to you. The idea of police. After saying that the, the terror alert is false, what did he do? He went, they went ahead to lock down Abuja. So if the terror alert that came from UK and US is false, why are you closing down Abuja? Why are you locking down Abuja? Now they went to make few arrests. And they say, he announced, he said, oh, that they've made arrests and they will be in court. <laughs> he said it was a false alert. Try why are you not making arrests? Why are you not saying you're going to be in court? My people, have you seen the lies that you can't trust these people? Meanwhile, while this was going on, Buhari disappeared to, southern, to South Korea. Why did he go there? At that place, he was the only head of state that attended that function. That function was meant for ministers. But Buhari, so that he would just get out of Abuja, went to South Korea. The state Nigeria is in, mm. like when same people are riding in a vehicle, being driven by baboons. You just carry you and yourself, enter inside vehicle, and then who is driving the vehicle? Baboons and baboons are just there. I want my sister to show us some pictures of uh, terror uh, before we go to this one, like some pictures of the, the those tanks. Those tanks that uh, we are not saying that this one asking you, what will you do if these tanks appear in your neighborhood? What will be your response? Holy so, Ghost fire. Oh, okay. They will call Holy Ghost fire to come and help you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Does it make sense? How come when you want to eat, when you're hungry? You don't lie down. And don't go to the table and sit down and say, Holy Ghost fire, and then food will come. Do you think God will forgive you? If God gave you a choice land and said, take this land. Okay, look at this. 
terror tanks. If this, because that's how they form membership. They told, told you that Nigeria is already a member state of OIC. They have these things at their disposal. If this shows up in your neighborhood, what are you going to do? What will be your response? You think these things are not in their hands? You think that these things are not at their disposals? If these things are not at their disposals, they will not be saying, the way, they will not be speaking the way they speak. The way they talk to people, the way they talk, the way you see them come out to say certain things. If they do not have things like this cooking up somewhere, they will not be talking that way. When you see certain things, it should make you to reason. We are also talking to the military personnel from our area, from the Nina's Alliance. You are seeing these things. The civilians are handicapped if this thing, type of things show up in their neighborhood. But you are trained to take care of things like this. Begin to think in your mind. Begin to prepare. Don't let them fool you. Do not let them fool you that you are military for Nigeria to defend Nigeria. You are inside that country. You are inside that military. You know what has been going on. You know all the sabotage. You know everything. Please, the military officers from Nina's um, Alliance, Middle Belt Block, Southwest, South, 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 please don't go there sleeping. Moranya Kaz, open your eyes and begin to see. Something happened this November. November, this November, we're inside. The National Executive Council of Mieti Allah, they came out with key resolutions. <laughs> yes, Mieti Allah, Fulani Social Cultural um, Group. Fulani, they don't own any land in Nigeria. <laughs> they are non indigenous. Mm. They just came conquering people. Because if they own land, why are they spreading everywhere, killing people and taking land? It's because they don't own land. That's why they come out, come to kill people. So they did meeting and then came out with their resolution, key resolution. The first one, they demand for Federal Ministry of Nomadic Affairs. Yes. They want Nigeria to set up Federal Ministry of Nomadic Affairs. <laughs> they demand the restoration of 415 grazing reserves. We told you that all of you will become almajiris and you'll be selling cows. That's what will happen to you. They seek to broaden educational opportunities and address pastoralist challenges across the country. Mm -hmm. They said that in few weeks, they will be having peaceful rallies to make their choice candidates for 2023 election public. These are people that have no business being in your land in the first instance. They are the first to have your NIN number that you don't have. They are the first to have your uh, the passports, international passports. They are the ones, the first to have PVCs. Fulanis know what they want. And they always go for it. There's a picture, my, my sister, check please. There's a picture down that shows about PVC. Them are coming out to shout that, oh, PVC, foreigners are with the PVC. <laughs> we say, oh, really? Foreigners are with PVC. In a land, in a multicultural and multi-ethnic society like Nigeria, how is it that livestock farming has now assumed the front seat and received special treatment? The intelligence and skills and ingenuity in science and technology of the indigenous people have been relegated to the background. Everybody now, they want us to be rearing cattle. They want all our children to become almajris, hmm. like they have done to have such children. 
What is wrong with us? What is wrong with the rest of us? Igbo nation especially, because we are from Igbo nation. You can see Yoruba nation making their efforts, gathering their people, doing, taking instruction from Ninas. If they don't understand anyone, they'll come back and invite Bratoni, say, explain this, explain this. They actually own the project, but because it's an alliance, they come from time to time to say, okay, this is this is what we are doing. This is what we are doing. That's all we, Ninas is asking you. Ninas is not saying you should not form your little, little groups. But however, we are aware that you have no strategy and you have no plan to deliver the people. Why are you deceiving the people? Today is Biafra. Tomorrow is PVC. No, down, down. There's another, There's I think it's the last one I posted. This one will come up later. When they say, there's, a, there's something on, on um, Punch, Punch newspaper, you know, when they talked about. So why, why, why is it that our people, we know what we want, but we are too scared to go for it. Why can't we go for what we want? Why is it that we know what we want, but we are afraid to say they will not give you? Who will not give you? Who will not give you? People that are just 1%? Foreigners in your land, people that are non indigenous, mm -hmm. they're, make, they're making demands. Then, when it's your time, you oh, how, how are you gonna get it? How are they gonna give it to me in your exactly. own land? Foreigners are making demands in your own land, you cannot make demand except to fool around. This is punch. He said, Immigration nabs foreigners disappear. Someone has disappeared. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Um, okay. I'll pull it up. Keep talking. Okay. So he said, this is report. This is punch giving that report that immigration nabs foreigners with voters card. This is the report that given. We show you the picture so that it will not be as if we are just talking. This is 2nd November publication, 2022, that they found foreigners with PVC, with voters card. How did that happen? How did that happen, my people? Our people should wake up. Okay, you can forget the picture. Let's go back to the this. Our people will wake up. What are our governors doing? State governors that should micromanage the needs of the people. What are they doing? They have become emperors. Yes, I heard Mwike had said that he has 100,000 um, special assistants or whatever. When they move, they move in envoys, convoys. They have military bullets, uh, 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 bullet uh, proof cars dashing their friends. These are governors. These are your governors. All they do is how to win election. All they care about is how to win election. There's no continuity in anything they are doing. Nothing. This one will come. Play from where this one stopped and then continue. No continuity. We had the report of Anambra State. He said the past governor that they had 137 million. They were paying 137 million per month to clean office in yeah. Anambra State. Mm. 137 million, you heard me right. Governor Soludo said this in an interview to clean the office. Which office? Anambra State Office. And then he's proud. He said, I cut it down to 11 million. <laughs> Nobody's thinking about how do we, how can you allow this happen? How can we hold people accountable? It's not just good enough to say, oh, I cut it down to 11 million. Then after four or eight years, you will go out. Your brother will come back and start to using 20, 200 million to clean office. It's no more allowed. The poverty is too much. It's biting our, Peter, our people. Peter Obi will tell you, I saved money. The money that was meant to build infrastructure, you saved it in the bank. Why people were hungry and dying, and then we clap for him. He saved money, yo. Shishi, shishi. He saved money. He doesn't bring us shishi. Akagom. Everything is inside. He locked it up. 
It reminds me of this uh, story, this uh, story in the Bible, when the man said, oh, they gave us the people talents. The one that they gave one talent, he said, I hid it on the ground because I know you reap where you did not plant. So I said, God, see your talent too. Shishi, I put it under the ground. I brought it out. <laughs> God say, why didn't you even put it in the in the bank for me? So in this in this case, it, 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 the money that is meant for infrastructure, you save you decide save the money. Meanwhile, you have not paid contractors, you have not paid people, you have not paid nothing. You are running a whole state government like a private family business, and we are clapping. You make unilateral decisions. Think what to do. Contract is your companies that will come and take the contract. People are clap, clapping. If they tell you to invest, you uh, invest. A, a member of his Catholic church because he, exactly. he has to be Catholic. Exactly. So yeah. he has to be, he has to be, I remember that time they would go to church and say, Kukurunku, that's the code. He deepened the division between Anambra, uh, between Anglican and Roman Catholic. These are things that you go and find out for yourself. Then people are clapping. If you tell him to do, for him to invest, you go and invest in his mother's bakery. I say, I have invested. He enlarged his mother's bakery and employ more people. I say, he gave people employment. No standardization of operations. No accountability. No, no one is holding anybody accountable. Why? Because the 1999 constitution gave them immunity. We are talking about all the states' governments. 36 holes through which resources are leaking out because there's no standardization. The 1999 constitution gave them that authority to do anything. They, very rascal. Do they, do recklessly scatter money everywhere and nobody holds them accountable. And even when they leave, there's immunity on them that nobody can probe them. And nobody can do anything. Look at Buhari that came and started shouting corruption, corruption. Has he prosecuted anybody? He cannot do it. There's a picture, my dear, that new picture that I wanted to bring. Let's show our people because we are just using, use your chisel number as an example for you to know. Because when we, in part of Nina's 10 points, that we say we should use it to interrogate these politicians, we told you that large government like spending. We have 36 states, 774 local government areas. Instead of when we had region, four or five regions, where each region will be the government, and then that's what you do. So you have one governor or one or ever that is in charge of that whole region. Now they have pieces it to 36. 36 leaking holes. 36 devourers. Why? Because we are not operating the structure we are supposed to operate. It is 36 criminal enterprises called states. The people cannot hold them accountable and they cannot build anything for the people. So this report is coming. It says 10 accounts in the U.S. have been leaked to Tinubu. In U.S., 460000 $460, When they're calling all this money, you're saying, oh my God. What is this man doing? What is the business he's doing that is amounting all this wealth to himself? But then he can bring the next one. So U.S. court case. Tinubu may be disqualified from contesting. This is another topic. Because we keep telling our people that 2023 election is fraudulent. Just like Nigeria is fraudulent. They can decide and disqualify this man that you're looking at. Look at what they did during 2015. Good luck. They gave him a dummy ticket. Why all of them moved to APC to bring in Buhari, the Fulani man? Now they have given Tinubu another dummy ticket with him and his APC fighting and doing whatever he's doing. So it now depends on his level of fighting the evil. Where their mind is, is actually going to PDP. But he is fighting. How long is he going to fight? Criminal gangs fighting themselves. Then Peter B is the Fulani Iran boy. The VP, his younger brother, is the younger brother of that Baba Hamid. 
That's the VP. So the fingers are everywhere. Yet our people, with all these alerts, I remember when I was young, when I read Bible about the alerts that went to Israel. I said, this Israel in the Bible, are they dumb? <laughs> Until I now began to witness Nigerians. I now realize that the Bible is real. Human beings can be dumb like this. Very dumb. With all the warnings, all the alerts that God was giving to Israelites in the Bible. They will come from one trap to the next trap. Now, you know, they have people distracting them. Fake freedom fighters coming from everywhere. This one will come and say, I'm a de facto. This one will say, I'm a coalition. This one will get all talking trash. What is your plan? No. What is your strategy? No. Just noise. Stay in platform on WhatsApp. I'll be making noise. Old men with belly aphobia. That they are speaking English. If you correct them, their scrutiny is affected. Mm. You have insulted me. How dare you? How dare you insult me? Don't you know I have scrutiny? <coughs> what are you doing with it? What are you doing with it? Nothing. Nothing. Follow the one that the plan is on the table. No, your pride will not allow you. Some will say, I want to be recognized. Recognized for doing what? For being stupid? For leading my people for 10 years in a wrong direction, rather than humble yourself and say, please, what can I do to make this thing right? No, I want to be recognized. You and that, your recognition will kill you. Because you're wicked. This is wickedness of man against man. Man's inhumanity against man. That's what it is. You don't have a plan. You don't have a strategy. You are distracting your people from the only strategy that will free them. Mm. Because mm. you're proud. And you think the God of universe will let you. You and your generation will be wiped. Take it from the God of it. It's going to happen to all of you. One after you. Whether you're a politician, whether you're a church Is leader, whether you're a fake freedom fighter, Is whether it? you're a fake social influencer, all of you that are distracting our people from the only way that can save them free, you will pay with your personal lives and the lives of your children. We say... What is the expectation of Minas? Nigerian mm. Indigenous Nationalities Alliance for self-determination. What is the expectation? They are urging the indigenous peoples to begin to reason and articulate their thoughts. We're not trying to shove anything down your throat. We're saying just calm down and think. Reason together. Begin to think. Begin to think like, how do we do this? This is the terror. This is what we're seeing. This is what's on the table. What do we do? Think through each process. Whether it's self-determination that you're thinking and mouthing on social media. Whether it's a referendum. Whether it's the union. Whether it's the election. Sit down for once and think your process through. This is this. This is this. What of if this happens? What will I do? Then begin to activate an honest plan, honest strategy. If you have none, go and align with those that have. Take responsibility for once, for the outcome you're getting. Stop blaming others for your, for, for, for your rascality. Be ready to take responsibility. Don't leave things for chance. Oh, for one spirit, you don't know God, you keep calling God. Does it make sense? Mm. If we refuse to plan, then we have planned to fail. Especially when the enemy is also planning to ruin you in that your planlessness. Mm. Ask yourself, be honest. Stop making noise. I tell people when you talk too much, your brain cannot function. Calm down. Stop abusing alcohol. Calm down. Ask yourself. I want to go from plan, from point A to point B. What is the process? How am I going to put the process, a process that I will trust, that will move me from point A to point B? Those that talk about self-determination, for instance, the standard thing to do 
when you want self-determination or freedom of your people, the first thing that UN expects from you is the initial territory. What is the territory you are speaking about? Because the land is fixed. There's no nation that is built in the air. There's no nation that is built or inside water. It has to be on the land where you will keep people. And that land is fixed. It's a territory. And it has a map. I heard one saying, oh, yeah, Biafra, before, it can increase and increase. Say population can increase or decrease. Uh, the territory can increase or decrease. Are you Fulani? It's only Fulani that said that their population is water, it's fluid, it's flowing, it's flowing. It will flow into Nigeria. It will flow into Sudan. It will flow into Cameroon. It will flow into Niger. It's only Fulani that are flowing with their population because they want to conquer everyone. Ndibo, is your population also fluid? If your population is not fluid and your land is fixed, what is the territory? What is the initial territory? If somebody calls you from UN and say you want Biafra, freedom, what is the territory that you want? This is a referendum. What is the territory? And then the next question they will ask you, okay, like, because like in Biafra of 1967, it did not include Asaba and the Abu. That's for one. And these are facts. So you ask yourself, what of the level of discussion, negotiation, within and without? Have you done the chapter of relationship? All the social media sensitization, all that you're doing with that is just to um, sensitize people. That's not the concrete plan. For the borderline cases, because this is the expectation of Nina's. Sorry, I'm coming. It's like we have spent one hour. Have you spent one hour? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh my God. Sorry, guys. I have to round up now. So for for there's some borderline um places like Ishekiri and Nyoma and Ikwere, all these were like, oh, am I Igbo? Am I Yoruba? Am I these things do not cause problem. We have standard operation of uh, settling them. They use plebiscite and referendums to sort them out. So that shouldn't be a problem. So we need concrete plan, not noise making. Every noise you're hearing about Biafra is monetized. It's about money making. We have to say the truth. It's about money making. They are using the goodwill that we had 1967-70 when we had that Biafra. They are using that goodwill to make money all over the world. And you know what? Every time you use the word Biafra, you're setting back our restoration project backwards. You're setting it backwards. Because somebody will ask you, what is the territory? What are the people inside it? Have you negotiated with them? Have you discussed with them? And have they agreed to work with you? Otherwise, if they find you in their land, they're going to shoot you. You have another war in your hands. These are things that people should be thinking about. So in summary, we are saying that whatever you're doing, whether you're talking about election, self-determination, freedom, we have to work from realities. What are the realities on the table? There's insecurity. There is terror convergence in Nigeria. Failed currency. We must take full responsibility of our spaces. Or we will all perish. The first step is taking down that instrument that confers power and authority on baboons. That is the 1999 constitution. That is the first step. So that we will stop the baboons in their agenda, which you know that they're not making mistakes. They know where they are going. So serious epidemic is going on everywhere. That's our uh, uh, reality. And we need to run. So thank you very much. Um, we'll thank stop. you. Um, thank you so much. Right. So... Um, Thank you for watching. As usual, help us to share, like, subscribe, uh, do all those things that we need to do to ensure that people get this information. We know that they are ensuring that no one will see this, so we cannot emphasize this enough. Uh, we will be sharing the PowerPoint so that if you want to uh, take a look uh, by yourself, that would be awesome. So we're going to share it on some of the platforms. So help us to share the PowerPoint because sometimes that's what we need to understand what we are saying. You can also watch the video. 
Uh, we want to thank our brother Ife Chi for always being here and providing the information. Sister Ukwe, for the amount that Babangida gave to OIC, $21 billion. Can you imagine then? It's enough to cause tsunami. So um, it's terrible when our people are dying in the Mediterranean Sea. So what can we say? Stop deceiving yourself. Do not let them show up with a terror tank in front of your home and there's nothing for you to do. Blood of Jesus cannot challenge a terror tank. Blood of Jesus cannot challenge the Fulanese determined to take your land. No, nothing will stop them except if you stop them and do the right thing now. Because <laughs> this year, 2023 election is going to cost a lot of blood that you're not willing to pay. So thank you. We will see you guys next week. Um, and remain uh, safe. Bye-bye.